Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, normally, I was going to give this presentation with my colleague, Lise, but unfortunately, she couldn't join, so I'm alone and uh, <laughs> a little bit nervous. I hope you will forgive me for that. Um, it's also my birthday today, so... Uh <laughs> And normally I take a day off on my birthday, so you're very lucky that I'm here. <laughs> uh, but yeah, back to work. So first I want to show you this picture, uh, which is actually very similar to this room, because it's a group of people consisting out of people from the city, researchers, students, and other stakeholders. So like the same as here, but then in small, and then Belgian. Um, and yeah, then I will explain how, how this uh, comes about in, four, in three different uh, parts of the presentation. So the first one is uh, the Stadsakademie, like the five pillars that uh, the, the Stadsakademie consists of. And Stadsakademie is a Dutch word for uh, urban academy, but we choose to not translate it because we think it's kind of unique in itself. Uh, then we'll explain a bit how uh, we work, and then we will dive in deeper into two projects just to show how it works in practice. Um, so the five essentials are first uh, that the Stats Academy focuses on wicked urban sustainability challenges, and with wicked uh, we mean like um, problems that are really complex, where there are a lot of like value conflicts that are not easy to solve, where you don't really know the solution in advance. So those are the things we want to work on. Uh, the second is that we focus on issues of our own city, where the university is based. Ah, yeah, the Stats Academy is a university uh, um, interdisciplinary research consortium. So just uh, to give you a bit more context. Um, so here on the presentation, you see two newspaper articles about two topics that we have worked on uh, within the Stats Academy. The first one is about social housing and demolishing social housing. And the second one is about selling public agricultural land of the city. Um, the third principle is that we really want to, well, we want to, <laughs> we don't always manage, but we want to work in a transdisciplinary way, so include um, stakeholders from outside of the university, uh, from the beginning and throughout the trajectory to the end. We are not always managing, as I said, but it's our goal. Then the fourth one I think is very important, is that we really uh, want to stay away from this kind of management logic and uh, embrace the search and being okay with getting lost sometimes and with finding things that maybe you are not looking for because we really don't know in advance what will come out of the trajectory. Uh, and then the last one is that we really try to work on the nexus between education, research and services of the university. And then, yeah, you see some pictures of how that looks like in practice. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> um, so then, how, how do we work? What kind of activities do we do? Uh, the main goals of the Stats Academy are first to experiment with new ways of knowledge because for these wicked issues, you cannot go in uh, like the reductionist monodisciplinary way. So we need to have transdisciplinary processes, be more reflexive on the way. Uh, we try to encourage student-led uh, engagement as well. Uh, the second is to explore on sustainability issues in Ghent, as I mentioned before. And the last one is to become <laughs> an incubator and international reference for transdisciplinary research and education on urban sustainability problems, so that's uh, our goal, to also become some kind of knowledge center. Um, so how is the Stats Academy structured? There's one overall coordinator, which is Lise, who couldn't be here today. 
And then there's the day-to-day -day management by uh, yeah, the coordinator and then three professors that really like the project and also started it and put a lot of time in it. And then there's the steering group, which consists out of uh, 10 to 15 professors, postdocs, PhDs, non-academic actors. Tom, you are in the steering group, eh? so... <laughs> um, yeah, and Tom is from the city of Ghent, was also involved in the project from the beginning. And we have a big community of people, uh, as you can see here, the picture on the Stadsakademie party that we held, which was a nice event. Um, what are the themes that we are working on? Um, these are the different trajectories. The first two are focused on the University of Ghent circular building and um, living lab campus terra and then there is uh, uh, one on mobility and accessibility in the city there is one on urban agriculture of which the news article was about that i showed before there is one about making space for care there is one about the interactions between the city the campus and the neighborhood uh, and all the challenges that come with it. There's one about urban renewal projects, like how if, if a city renews, how yeah, what comes with this. Uh, then there's one on food democracy and one on diversity and social housing. Um, and then the methodology. In these trajectories, we always try to start with the Stadsakademy session where we bring all those, so this diverse group of people that I showed in the beginning, we bring them on the table, and we don't start from a research question, but we start from like the theme, and from this session, research questions emerge. So we actually mostly use a kind of world cafe method, where people sit in different tables, and you switch, and then you build upon like what was done by the group before. And it's a very rich uh, start of a project. Um, and then it can continue in like a research project or in courses. Sometimes students work on, uh, on these like questions. Uh, there are some trajectories that organize seminars, debates, lunch talks. And so it's very different. Each trajectory can like take a completely different form. And then the last one is one which is uh, maybe most key to the Stadsakademie are the master thesis ateliers. And there students from different disciplines work on a common like, yeah, theme again in a transdisciplinary context. So they go for field cities, they uh, exchange with the stakeholders, they exchange with each other. Uh, they still write their own thesis, all of them, but they kind of are part of this inter- and transdisciplinary group. And at the end, they also have a collective assignment where they bring back their research to the stakeholders. Uh, then lastly, a little bit into detail, how this can look in practice. Uh, so this is the trajectory of diversity in social housing, which is one of the longest ones. And so here you can see the uh, professors who are most engaged, or the teachers. So it's Luce Beekmans, who is from architecture. Thomas Bloch, he's a professor in political sciences, but specialized in sustainability. And Peter van der Nabele is uh, connected to the university, but also to the city as a um, like urban planner, I don't know to translate his function exactly, but he's a Stadsbaumeister. Uh, so it has been going on for four years, which, uh, so each year there are other master thesis students uh, working on like a subdivision of the question, and they also give the, their knowledge to the new students. So you can see here that it has been like different areas, different um, yeah, aspects of the question of diversity in social housing. Uh, and so, like, last year it was about uh, St. Bernadette, a neighborhood in Kent. And also here you can just see a quick glance of the backgrounds of the students involved. 
So it goes from engineering architecture to political sciences to philosophy, pedagogy. So it's a very interesting setting to working in as a student. Uh, and then the second example that I want to mention because it's a little bit different and also because it's my own uh, project is the Living Lab Campus Terra, which, uh, where we use the same logic of the Staatsakademie, but we, we apply it on the university because also the university is an actor in the city and it also has all these complex like, issues to deal with. And what we also do is really intervene on the campus. Like we see the campus as an experimental place. And so we have run several master thesis ateliers and worked in courses on challenges of the campus. Um, so some themes we have worked on circular building. This is the campus, very uh, uh, 60s uh, style. Uh, we worked on biodiversity. You see some experiments on the campus where we uh, took away the concrete um, and they were testing like which kind of seeds can grow on this kind of soil. Uh, and this is about like campus and the neighborhood interaction with the bar below. And we did some kind of neighborhood safari where we took the neighbors to different research places on the campus. Many neighbors said that they have, had never been even on the campus, so that was uh, like a nice, nice moment. Um, and then lastly, some reflections from our experience and also from a research paper that my colleagues are working on where they did some uh, focus groups with the students from uh, diversity and social housing, uh, is that it's really it's really challenging, like there are a lot of difficulties, uh, like to name some, you need to prepare a lot in advance because in Ghent, the master thesis, uh, you sometimes need to know one year in advance your topic as a student, so it's really not flexible. And then every faculty has also a different procedure, so you really need to make a puzzle. Um, yeah, the university is really not organized in an interdisciplinary way. So that makes it also hard to work in this way. And we also saw that some students in the first semester, they like go and explore and exchange and they get all these ideas, but then it's difficult for them to still find their focus and to yeah, have like their thesis uh, finalized in time. Uh, but the students also mentioned that they really liked to have these different perspectives and that they also like, they feel like really that this atelier can serve as a kind of safe space. There's also a physical space where the students can work, where is also the green office. Uh, and then lastly, like what we are struggling most with is to valorize the research and to bring it back in a way that it's, there's still a big gap between a thesis and like something that's practical to use. Uh, so yeah, any feedback or help on that is always welcome. Uh, yeah, that was it from my side. So thank you for uh, bearing with me.